Hello everyone, what's up? Moses here, bringing you another Walson video, and in this one we're going to talk about this new mage uh, I made, Caster, Sorceress, uh, you call it uh, whatever you want. Um, the original idea was to use these um, Veiled Eclipse uh, pants, which are the one unique I thought could be cool to build around, uh, but it turned out uh, not so great. I wanted to use, uh, I'm going to show you, I wanted to use... Um, uh, Infinity Blade, but the problem with Infinity Blade is that it it just feels uh, it just feels really really weak, and uh, the attacks are very very slow in uh, in comparison. Let me just do this real quickly. Uh, the uh, Infinity Blade uh, attacks are just like feeling pretty pretty slow in comparison to like um, Thunderstrike right here. See Thunderstrike. Uh, it casts real quickly. Oh, we actually dealt damage to some breakable item in town. Uh, Thunderstrike like casts very quickly. Uh, you know, um, you're able to uh, deal um, you know quick quick damage, quick succession. Uh, but Infinity Blade, even with that amount of cast speed, just feels very slow, very very clunky in comparison. Um, and I didn't, I couldn't make it work to uh, you know to a point of uh, satisfactory you know so I dumped the idea the idea was to generate rage with your other skills and to use infinity blade as a shadow uh, spell because you can convert the damage to shadow applying curses uh, with this uh, gusts in dark space uh, modifier which will allow you to then spend rage instead of willpower for that particular skill so you always kind of like have a resource available um, whether it's rage or willpower to cast your spells and with enough uh, you know transfer time reduction and with using a staff um, you'll be able to kind of like have constant uptime of your uh, damage and uh, that was that was the original uh, thought behind uh, thought process behind uh, behind the build, but because Infinity Blade is so underwhelmingly weak and uh, clunky to use, uh, we kind of like ditched the idea, and I put a uh, Solar Fall instead. And uh, yeah, so let's go through just the skills uh, modifiers that I've chosen. Aether Walk. Uh, well, all the most important here is uh, Stasis at the beginning of end. Uh, and end of the teleport and uh, we're using the one that allows to, the skill to cast multiple times to increase the, the willpower cost uh, dropping the cooldown to be able to travel quickly uh, teleport range uh, willpower cost um, removing all CC really strong stuff and then uh, movement speed after completing uh, the teleport um, the second one is uh, solar fall which is this and it allows you to kind of like uh, move the skill around, um, which is like really nice and mobile. You just, you know, hover over and you kind of like recast the uh, skill. Um, and that's, or you just leave it on the ground. It kind of like moves uh, with the button pressed. And uh, it's a really, really cool spell dealing some damage over time. Um, and here we got, um, yeah. Um, uh, additionally, uh, some ailment crit, uh, chance score, some critical damage, and uh, reduce initial cast time. And here we still have three more points. I don't really know what we'll choose, uh, but you know, it's all extremely interchangeable, easily uh, replaced. Over here in the um, um, anomaly, we have uh, chosen the air effect, average damage. Um, Enemies are pulled into the vortex. Skill duration, uh, ailment chance score allows to cast two vortexes, uh, some crit chance, and some crit damage over here. Uh, over here we got Bulwark of Dawn with mostly cooldown reduction and damage, and then uh, skill f yeah, skill follows the caster, so you can uh, pop it and run away, run around, and still have uh, healing happening. Uh, and damage around you to enemies that are, you know, coming to uh, a little closer. And then Tear of Ithiliel here, this will give us uh, just another damage over time spell uh, based on uh, cooldown. Uh, oops, this one. You know, cooldown based, we got the area of effect, 
uh, over here and uh, you know um, um, you pop it and it deals damage over time instead of the meteor this is the strongest uh, most obvious choice here and then uh, some air of effect uh, cooldown uh, some crit damage and uh, some extra uh, damage uh, over here um, and uh, Thunderstrike that we are using converting damage into shadow um, over here gives a buff that increases our shadow damage uh, willpower cost crit chance and crit damage we'll still have another point I'm not really sure what we're gonna do with it maybe ailment chance score or something like that and when it comes to uh, the idea of the character, it's uh, essentially to get as uh, many curse stacks on enemies, uh, trying to increase the damage we're inflicting uh, on the enemies. So we're picking up pretty much everything in Kabbalist and uh, ailment stuff. So we get the plus one over here. Uh, we get a chance to multiply the number of uh, stacks applied. Uh, increasing the maximum stacks applied uh, plus two element inflicted per hit and then we're getting uh, increased maximum elements uh, over here and over here outside of that uh, we're getting the um, duty to exterminate plus 200 maximum rage and willpower I did travel here to try and get some more spell damage and spell cast speed um, when this was an infinity blade build um, you know, for the couple of levels I tried it on, but I think maybe we'll respec and go through the life nodes here and save us a couple of points because cast speed is not that important uh, anymore. Uh, it's still very good, of course, as a spellcaster for our Thunderstrike, but most of the uh, most of the spells we're using are cooldown spells, so cast speed uh, I should probably prioritize a little less. And of course, the tree is going to change. Um, you know, there's no. Uh, <laughs> It's not an exact science. I'm always changing and respecting the tree like multiple times, right? So it's gonna happen with this character just the same as it did with the previous one. But the the, the core of the build idea is that we're affecting stay affecting enemies with stasis and with curse. So we're definitely taking which time cannot heal, and this is a still a very strong survivability tool. Time weaver uh, dire juncture, and um, you know another great survivability tool is elevated gain and uh salvatory anchor i'm going to go through the gear actually in a second and then we are picking up all the uh crit uh from the tree excuse me there's uh, some more crit happening here 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 and here uh oh no this is the cast speed yeah so cast speed uh over here that we're taking and uh you know uh um uh, to to increase our cast speed. I actually don't know if I'm going to go through these. These are actually these may these may change, uh, but for now I am going there. Uh, and then some more crit over here. This node, in my opinion, is still good. Uh, 60 is uh, probably the biggest that you can get on the tree, except this one without penalty. But this one, even with the 30% less uh, or reduced damage, still good because it's not a less multiplier. It is uh, reduced uh, damage, so in my opinion, still worth taking. And uh, I believe that's all there is to say on the tree. But again, it could it could change a couple more times. But you know, the the idea is that we do want to get everything on Kabbalist with all the element staff uh, stuff, uh, and this. Uh, node gives us essentially a temporary buff that helps us with the clear not so very great against bosses um this is a temporary buff that gives us uh, uh damage per enemy killed based on the the, the stacks uh so uh, of, of of ailments the types of ailments they have all right so essentially um it's just based on how many enemies you kill uh essentially i will be getting uh you know, frost uh, ailment um, bonuses, um, shadow and cursed ailment bonuses, because these are the three types of ailments that I uh, currently have on my bar. Um, if we had uh, something with lightning, something with, um, um, you know, fire, then we would uh, then we would get these as well. Currently, I don't have anything. Um, I mean, I am converting my damage over here to uh, shadow damage 
so this potentially if i remove this it will turn into a uh, shock so you know we'll have four buffs of uh, damage happening uh but i do want to increase chance to uh you know inflict curses and i believe that curse uh damage is going to be in the long run uh, more worthwhile than um you know than adding another ailment uh buff uh bonus from from this node right here it's called uh immortal offering so yeah at the moment we're only getting three buffs uh from this one but i still think it's pretty good uh, definitely worth taking because we're also getting some spell damage node uh, over here and it's only three point investment so it's not that big of a deal um, and then uh, bestial frenzy for the uh, probably one of the few more multipliers in this game um, you know damage for each nearby enemies within uh, four media radius um, maybe we'll pick up this one as well but again uh, all these uh, little nodes behind the big nodes uh, like uh, this one, this one, um, this one potentially. Uh, these will be uh, maybe these two even. No, not these two, but maybe this one, the element chance score, 18% here. Uh, maybe these two. Uh, all of these will be in the future because at the moment we're only level 61 and I kind of wanted to just get the uh, skeleton uh, you know placed in place and then start piling on the skeleton all the meat of the build i guess if you will um so that's kind of like basically the idea uh, when it comes to stats i did put some points into uh ailment uh chance i wanted to reach 20 percent but it's not quite there yet and i didn't want to spend any more points we of course are going to get you know uh I don't know, at level 80, I don't know if we're going to reach level 80 with this character, but, you know, um, we're going to get more points as we level up, right, 10 points per level, and uh, I believe you're getting a, a, a stat bonus increase per level either way, I'm entirely sure, don't catch me up on that, but uh, I think we might, um, so stats are going to increase and the chance score is, uh, well, probably going to reach uh, 20. And uh, as well, you know, with gear, we're going to be able to uh, reach um, uh, slightly higher once, you know, we have our gear figured out. Uh, but yeah, for now, uh, I put some points on agility. Probably going to change that now that we don't have the Infinity Blade uh, happening. Uh, maybe we don't need that much cast speed. It only works really for uh thunderstrike at this point the rest of my skills are cooldown skills uh and uh aether jump doesn't have any cooldown anyways so yeah uh, a little bit of toughness to get roughly 40k um, hp and uh, ferocity to get that uh, 60 uh, percent spell crit chance which is uh, fairly solid for us uh, when it comes to the gear i um spammed some greater entropy orbs and got myself pretty sweet stuff with crit damage and with uh, you know a bunch of uh, occult type damage to spells and some lightning uh, but mostly the occult is great because of the aether uh, for stasis shadow for cursed so this will be added to all the spells uh, we deal and of course we socketed with more shadow for more um, uh, curse um, you know ailment stacking uh, the jewelry, we got just like some all resists here, uh, max willpower and rage is one of the rings I gotten from uh, one of the untainted runs, uh, big life roll, some resistances, socket is crit chance on all of my, uh, um, yeah, it's kind of like underwhelming choice in, uh, in gems, that's like on a side note, when you have that many types of gems, it comes down to really, uh, having... Uh, transfer time reduction or crit chance uh, none of these are actually worth it when it comes to the um, unless you need maybe leech but outside of that all of the uh, rest of the you know uh, gems don't really offer too much in terms of like worthwhile uh, to socket into your gear and since I already have a lot of transfer time reduction on my gear um, I don't really need it so essentially all I have left to choose with is, uh, you know, spell crit chance. It would be nice if support would give, you know, cast speed, uh, some form of crit damage, uh, some spell damage, stuff like that, or 
attack damage and all that kind of stuff. It would be also nice if instead of particularly rend damage, it, for example, you know, in support two, it would say uh, physical uh, or material damage, right? The the global kind of like uh, theme of your character. If you're doing a material character, like an attack build, it would be material. It would be nice if these will be um, material damage here, occult damage instead of specifically shadow, instead of specifically lightning. Um, so, you know, for supports. Of course, the flat type damage, that makes sense on the offensive ones. But like for the supports, I don't know. <clears throat> um, even the defensive one with the resists. Um, I mean, even that is like elemental, it's not frost resists, you know what I mean? So the same should be, uh, instead of frost damage, uh, for the supports, it should be like elemental damage, and then it will kind of like increase the range of why you would use a gem like that in a socket. But that was, uh, you know, on a side note. Um, so yeah, let's go through, uh, we talked about the staff, this ring, uh, over here we got like just a lot of resist, uh, some damage, uh, rage and willpower cost reduction. Uh, over here we got uh, pretty much the same except agility. Um, a bunch of resists, you know, secondary resist, occult and material, some damage, rage and willpower cost reduction. Uh, these boots are pretty sweet. They're giving us occult damage, which is mostly what we deal. So uh, occult damage, ferocity, attack speed is meaningless. Uh, I haven't seen cast speed rolls on any armor piece. I don't think it's a bug. I think they just kind of like maybe forgot about cast speed and uh, enabled items to roll only with, um, you know, attack speed. Or maybe it's because I'm using so-called bruiser and they were like, okay, bruiser, warrior, warrior wouldn't want cast speed but you end up using life all resist gear anyways and not particularly uh force shield uh because the way it's just you know uh, a lot weaker than life all resist gear so um yeah i believe it's mostly because force shield doesn't roll all resist as an implicit um only um only is like explicit roll secondary resist like I have on this over here. So again, uh, I don't know about that. Um, and then, um, yeah, Elman chance score, pretty decent. Uh, over here, we're going to turn this into a legendary, I think. We got some ferocity and some resist. Hopefully we hit something nice, like maybe cooldown, maybe, um, you know, willpower cost reduction or transfer time or some of the other utilities. Uh, even flat dodge is actually pretty sweet. Uh, over here, we got some flat damage to attacks, unfortunately, but some resistances, transfer time, big life roll, and spell damage. So this belt is actually pretty decent. Uh, here, um, we have some transfer time reduction and just a lot of resists. Unfortunately, no stats here. Uh, when I find another one of these, I can maybe try and spam... Um, you know, but this is one of the 187, one of the few uh, legendaries that dropped in the 187 runs that we made before, um, you know, uh, Bleeding Edge was no longer a thing. <laughs> so, yeah, I got very lucky with this, spammed a few uh, greater entropy orbs, and here we are. Um, here, uh, another very, very solid helmet with... Uh, um, you know, cooldown and transfer time with ferocity, decent resistances. Uh, over here, we got rage cost reduction, ferocity, resistances. You get the idea. And passive dodge chance. This is, my, I think, my one piece with passive dodge chance. So I just wanted to show um, you don't need a lot of dodge. Uh, yeah, I only have it on the one piece. And uh, my dodge chance is 15%, right? If I remove it, it the dodge is zero. And without any kind of investment to dodge, just one, um, you know, 260 dodge roll on uh, these shoulders, it goes up to 15%, which is very, very significant. So imagine if you get like three pieces or four pieces, you know, you can get your dodge to roughly maybe 50%. Um, and this is not like block where 
dodge actually prevents all incoming damage when you dodge it um not block and block efficiency um, just you know preventing a portion of your damage uh dodge is actual 100 percent damage mitigation essentially so uh, avoidance so yeah um pretty strong stat overall i only managed to roll it on one of my uh pieces um but yeah mostly resists is the the important thing you're looking for if you manage to get dodge you know it's a free bonus um and then over here we got some more agility life resists uh we're going to turn that into a legendary um and then over here we got some sacred damage to spells transfer time reduction cr uh crit damage um, and some attributes um, you know there's a couple of attack mods here but nothing's perfect again over here uh, crit uh, cast speed some crit damage some life and some uh, elemental damage to spells with elemental resists this is basically the gear uh, nothing too insane but also not too bad either so the gear is actually fairly solid uh, because it's mostly from stuff that I picked up uh, on a, you know, on my previous character, and uh, we're treating this character as if the entire bar is uh, locked, and we're currently, um, you know, doing. Uh, we did 73, and now we're going to be doing uh, 76. So let's actually. Do I have any projects available? I do. Uh, End game can symbol, no thanks. Let's get these, maybe we'll get some gold with them. Okay, so we're doing a 76. Enemies have a little bit of extra health. Um, crit resistance, uh, elemental resistance. Um, Champions got additional modifier stamina, and that's it. All right, let's do this. This is shadow. Okay, we're fine. Our movement speed is fairly good, right? So yeah, when we uh, teleport, of course, we're going to be applying uh, stasis on enemies. When you see enemies have their, uh, like a little uh, something dark over their heads, little dark circle uh, over their heads, that means uh, they're cursed. I am using uh, two willpower potions for the lulls. Uh, because I get my life leech uh, happening and, uh, you know, um, we don't have a rage uh, spender. Oh, this could be very good. I actually found four legendaries off of one red uh, curse chest uh, this one time. So that's pretty cool, potentially. Oh, things. And uh, I'm basically picking up everything for the gold because uh, rolling these uh, items was, um, you know, the sockets. Oh my gosh, that was so painful. That chest just refused to roll, man. It just refused. This is my first uh, map of the day also. So we are uh, <laughs> not even full. On uh, um, primordial essence, it's called. Yeah, I guess. All right, red chests. Let's uh, drop some legendaries, or no? I don't know. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. I really do like the uh, you know solar fall. Hello, yeah. As expected. What do we get? Uh, this is pretty bad. This is pure force shield. 
pretty bad and uh, life always pretty bad <laughs> but hey it's gold Uh, the damage numbers, like, they don't come close to the previous character. Again, with the scaling of th the way um, the way spells uh, scale, it's really kind of uh, tough, you know, to have them dealing the same number of, uh, the same numbers of damage as, uh, you know, as something like uh, Bleeding Edge or any attack build, really, that's uh, basing its damage around the, uh, you know, uh, the weapon damage is how we really scale uh, attacks in this game. Um, and, uh, and spells are just uh, underwhelmingly weak, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, it's still a pretty fun build, and uh, Spellcaster, you know, combat uh, feels very smooth, uh, especially with all the cast speed we're going to remove later. We do stack a lot of cast speed, so things uh, feel pretty smooth, rather. I think that uh, I'm not getting, I'm not getting my, you know, burn stacks. I mean, my freeze stacks. Maybe I need to convert the damage to fire. Oh, nice, another curse chest. This one is blue, so can't expect too much. But you never know, you may be uh, surprised. I like how a uh, solar fall travels. Uh, well, there's a ring and a belt. I'll pick those up. Ooh, another chest. So many chests. Very nice. Some entropy orbs. Mm, I will take that. So yeah, cooldown reduction is kind of important in this build. I really kind of got lucky with the, uh, you know, cooldown reduction I managed to get on my gear. Definitely decent. Oh, there's a pack over here. And melted. Another little side area. Wow, this dungeon. So many things, so many chests, so many side areas. Is this one just empty? Sometimes you enter zones and they don't really have anything. Or too much.
So much loot. Oh, abyssal tear. level up and also boss bond so let's get there what boss did we get alpha Svrir. Pretty smooth overall. Of course, this is a pretty low difficulty, but we're going to be progressing uh, with uh, with this guy, and uh, I'm curious to see what it will turn out to be and how far we can push. Uh, this is the character, this kind of like original uh, or initial, sorry, build guide, um, just um, showing you. Uh, what we've been doing with the character, gear, skills, modifiers, tree, um, and a little bit of uh, gameplay in the end. So hope you guys enjoy it. If uh, you did, feel free to, you know, leave a comment, uh, like, subscribe to the channel, drop uh, by the Twitch. We're going to be leveling up this character uh, in the next few days for sure. Uh, see how far it can push slowly but surely. You guys take care. And uh, I'll see you guys. Uh, see you guys around. Bye bye. Thanks for watching.